Amen. There is no greater love than Jesus Christ showed at the cross for his redemptive work at Calvary. Because of his redemptive work at Calvary, we have access to the power of God. Amen? Amen. This is truly the day that the Lord has made, and we will surely be rejoicing in it. If you would stand with me this morning, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. Very familiar passage. My glasses. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10. In the New King James Version, it reads this way this morning. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness, in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the evil withstand in the evil days and have done all to stand. Stand therefore having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shown your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, take the shield of faith which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. And verse 17, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Amen? Amen. This morning, you may take your seats. Let us pray. Open up our hearts and our minds so that we will receive what you have for us this morning. We pray these in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning, I I want to look at this passage and tag this message, The Invisible War. The Invisible War. Last Friday, my boys and I, we went to the movies. And we seen Batman versus Superman. And in that movie, before the movie started, there was a trailer that brought me back to my childhood. And it's a new movie coming out, but it was an old movie. And the trailer was labeled Ghostbusters. And I remember watching that whole series of films in the late 80s and early 90s. And in that particular film, it was a scene in which there was a portal that was opened up and that there was ghosts coming out from another dimension into New York. And the premise of the whole thing was that these Ghostbusters' job was to go to war with these ghosts and they would catch them and they, their ultimate job was to put them back through the portal into a, another dimension. Believe it or not, We are at war with beings from an unseen world, in an unseen world with a non-physical realm. You see, this war affects our lives in the here and the now. What goes on in that realm affects us here and the now. You see, this dimension is oftentimes not visible with the human eye, or or we can't touch it or feel it with human hands. And Paul describes it as a war going on that is not fought with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. You see, you don't have to be a Christian. You don't have to be saved to realize that this world is made up of more than things than what we can see, feel, or touch. You you see, even the skeptics, 
the non-church, non-believers will tell you that there are things outside the physical realm that affect us physically, spiritually, and mentally. You see, mathematicians and other types of scientists try to mathematically and theoretically explain the connection between the physical and the non-physical realm. In the context of world religions, there is also an explanation and how they explain the relationship between the physical and the non-physical. The Buddhists, the Hindu, the Taoists, they have explanations. The, the Hindus mistakenly believe that this unseen realm is occupied by thousands of gods and goddesses or their ancestors and the many incarnations of Vishnu, the sustainer god. The Mahayana Buddhists believe that this non-physical realm is occupied by many pre-incarnated spirits of the past and even the Buddha essence who looks down and dispenses his wisdom throughout the world while the Taoists of China believe that not only is this unseen realm occupied with their dead ancestors of the past, but it is filled with immortal humans who have been taken up to heaven and looked down and helped the world as it is. The non-religious, the non-scientific folk will oftentimes contribute activity in this non-seen, unphysical realm to many things from space aliens to ghosts. Even some claim that this activity is part of our unconscious mind playing tricks on us. But Paul tells us what this unseen, non-physical world is really all about. You see, Paul, in this text, tells us this morning who are the major players in this unseen, non-physical realm. If you look at verse 12, At the latter part, it says the rulers of this present darkness. And if you put this in the context of Ephesians chapter 2 and Colossians chapter 1 verse 13, we see that the rulers of this world is Satan and or his demons. And so in that context, we know this morning that this non-physical realm is occupied with Satan and his demons on the one side. While on the other side, in this unseen, non-physical realm, it's made up of God and his angels, his ministering spirits, and Jesus Christ himself. You see, we as Christians get confused about this non-physical, non-unseen world because of what the world tells us about it. On the one side of the coin, you have the biblically illiterate who will espouse that this realm is made up of angels who help us out during all types of circumstances and situations. You you hear many stories about how when late at night when a car crashes and and there's no one around and then all of a sudden there's someone out there helping that stranded passenger. And then when help comes, he just disappears. You oftentimes hear stories about how Late at night in hospital rooms when there is no family around, there's someone who comforts someone by their bedside. You see, we have all these stories about angels, but the less biblically astute diverge from what the Bible says about who angels really are. You see, the Bible teaches us this morning that angels aren't our fathers or mothers or sisters or or husbands or wives or humans who are trying to get into heaven. You see, the Bible tells us that angels are created beings. They're not humans who have died trying to get somewhere else. We also need to understand that our dead mothers, our dead fathers, our dead brothers, our uncles and aunts, and our husbands and wives aren't looking down from heaven, seeing what we are doing, trying to communicate with us. You see, many people misinterpret Hebrews 12 and 1 when it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, but there is a word in this text that says, therefore. And so if you properly interpret the text, it is simply saying that a great cloud of witnesses, a large crowd of past heroes of the faith, they are giving witness to the account 
of how important faith is. And so this is essentially telling us this morning that angels are created beings and they're not humans trying to get somewhere else. It's also telling us this morning that this realm is not made up of our dead relatives trying to communicate with us. You see, the Bible tells us to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And the story of Lazarus tells us that unbelievers go to a place where God is not. So simply saying to tell you today that Jesus is enough. You see, we don't need to think about our husbands and wives and past people who try to tell us something. You see, the Bible is clear that we don't need to talk to the dead. We are in this world to live out our destiny of God. And the people who have gone up up or with God in heaven, and they're not worrying about us. You see, that's why it's important to understand that Jesus is enough. So the Bible clearly teaches us that angels are not dead human spirits trying to get into heaven. And furthermore, ghosts are not real. You see, if you read in the Bible, if you see ghosts, it is more accurately translated the King James Version. Ghost is translated spirit, so you oftentimes see Holy Ghost, but it's more accurately translated Holy Spirit. You see, the Bible teaches us that there are evil spirits, there are ministering spirits, there are spirits, the Holy Spirit. But there are no ghosts in this world. Now, you, you might be saying, preacher, I don't care what you say, I have experienced some things in this world that seem like ghost activity to me or the paranormal. You, you, you might have interacted with people from other religions who tell you stories about how they have seen visions out there of people or of things that telling them to do stuff. I have taught college comparative religion for many years. And I oftentimes hear stories from people from other religions who oftentimes say that they're influenced by goddesses and, goddess and gods and, and, and all kinds of spirit. I, 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 let me tell you one thing. That... We, in this particular class I studied, we studied voodoo. And in this class, voodoo, we studied the origins. Voodoo comes from a synchronous religion between Christianity, some parts of Christianity and, and, and West African religion that couldn't together. And, and, and in this particular religion, they did sacrifice some chickens and all kinds of small animals. And so during slavery time, what they did is the British outlawed it, so it became underground. And so what you have is this religion who have all kinds of beliefs. And, and let me tell you, I, I, I've seen things. And, and I know that I am a child of God and I have the power of Jesus Christ with me and I can demand demons to stop and they will stop this morning. But like a fire person who has their fire protective gear, he only runs into a building if he has to. Yeah. And so this morning I'm telling you, leave that stuff alone. Because it is simply demon activity. You see, this morning, I've come by to tell you that this Ouija board stuff and all these mediums are all trying to talk to the past people. Leave it alone because it is devil and demon activity. You see, this is why Paul tells us to put on the whole armor of God. Because we are dealing with the devil and his demons. You see... That's why it's so important for us to understand that Paul begins the chapter by discussing our Christian lifestyle. He talks about what we should do as Christians to have a good walk and to glorify God. And then he suddenly changes directions and he discusses and he says, um, there, you are in a battle. You are in a battle. You see, our Christian lifestyle and this battle are closely related. You see, what goes on in the heavenly realm directly affects us here and in the now. And you need to understand that. And so we also need to understand that immediately upon receiving the Spirit of God on the inside of us, once we become born again, we will be in a constant struggle against our enemies. You see, the Bible clearly teaches us that we have three major enemies this morning. Three major hindrances of our Christian walk here in this dimension. The first enemy of the believer is the world system. 
You see, God allows Satan to set up this world system. And if you put your life on cruise control, it will lead you straight to hell. You see, the devil and his demons have set up a world system this morning that will try to have you fall to all the types of temptations that are out there. Drugs are killing our community. Because we don't have the power of God on any side to say, stop it. You see, this world system will have us all turned around and about. But the good news is that with the power of God on the inside of us, we have the power to go against this world system. Now, the second enemy of the believer is the devil and or his demons. You see, the devil and or his demons, the devil is not omniscient and omnipresent. The devil can't read your mind. The devil can't be everywhere at once. So the devil dispatches his demons all over the world. And these demons try to get you to do things that you shouldn't do. They will try to get you to go down the path of this world, which leads to sin and destruction and death. But the good news is, that we have the power of God on the inside of us so we can tell the demons to stop and be still and the demons will have to obey this morning. Now, you see, that is good news this morning. We have the power of God on the inside of us to fight the demons and the devil himself. You see, the third enemy, the third enemy of the believer is our flesh. It, it, it's us, y'all. It's us. You see, the Bible teaches us that we, when we are born again, we are new key creatures. And the old man has been passed away. We have a new nature in God this morning. That is good news. But the other side of the coin is that because we live in a world that is tainted by sin, our bodies are also tainted. And Paul talks about there is a struggle. When I want to do good, evil is always present. You see, when you're left alone to your own tendencies, you're going to do the wrong thing this morning. But the good news again is that we have the power of the Holy Spirit reigning on the inside of us. And all we have to do is allow the Spirit of God to control us. That is good news this morning. You see, we have enemies, but we have the power of God living on the inside of us. And that is good news this morning. You see, we are constantly engaging in a fight, an unending war until the day we die. And that's why Paul says we should be soldiers in a conflict. You, you see, we should gird ourselves with the whole armor of God. Now, the text opens by saying, finally, my brother. The charge that Paul is about to lay out in the text that we just read this morning, it's addressed to believers. It's addressed to saved folk. And he is saying, finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, now, first Paul charges us to be strong. If we are to not fall to every temptation that is around us, we have to be strong. But we can't be strong in our own strength. You see, that's why the text says we need to be strong in the power of the Lord. You see, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, we have that same power in our own lives. You see, we have power to fight the enemy. We have power to live right. We have power to talk right. We have power to be right. But we got to allow the power of God to work in our lives. You see, it's up to us. And that's why in the text it says, we must put on the whole armor of God. You see, the text don't say that Paul says that God will put the armor on you. It says, put on the whole armor of God. That means we must do something. You you see, we are to be strong in the Lord and in his might. And then, and then we put on the whole armor of God. 
and, and, and then we'll be strong. Now, the good news is that we are in a battle against enemies in a different realm that oftentimes we can't see, feel, or touch. But we have a captain, and his name is Jesus, the very Christ. You see, the war that we are involved in is a spiritual war. But our captain is stronger than the devil. And so the Bible says all we have to do is stand firm in God. And the good news is this morning is that we ultimately win. We know the end of the story. We know how it comes out at the end. We know that we ultimately come out victorious. And that is good news this morning. You see, when you're down and out and desperate for the help of God, you need to know this morning that ultimately you win. If you're involved in a circumstance or a situation where it seems hopeless, you need to understand that you win. When you're in and out and depressed, you need to know that you win this morning, uh, that God is in the rescuing business. Uh, You know that you have power this morning to do what God wants you to do. Now, I want you to notice, though, that we are told to put on the whole armor. Not just some of the armor, but all the armor. You see, God wants you to be prepared for the battle. You see, Satan is tricky and crafty. And and he will have you believing that it is impossible to live a righteous life. Impractical to believe in the Bible. Immature to rely on God. Improper to witness to others. Insane to be filled with the Spirit of God. You see, Satan is a deceiver and tries to get us caught up in the things of this world. You see, the devil will try to get us to think good is evil and evil is good. You see, we talk about sexual purity. And if you look at in this world, this world will tell you that if it feels good, then you need to do it. But the Bible tells us that we shouldn't fall to our sexual lusts. You see, the devil will tell us what is evil is good. You see, the the devil is tricky. You see, the devil will have us believe in that if we teach that all roads lead to God, that that's a good thing, that we are politically correct. But the Bible says that there is only one way to heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ himself. You see, the devil is tricky. And so that's why we need to equip ourselves for the fight. You, you see, it's been said that, that a soldier is no better than his equipment. And so Paul takes a few moments in this text to speak concerning our equipment. And, 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 and imagine, he, he, he gives um, the people of this Ephesian church an image that they recognize of a Roman soldier. And so he uses this metaphor. And in verse verse 14, he says that we as Christians, we need the belt of truth. The belt of truth just simply means that we need the word of God. We need the word of God in our lives. You see, the word of God is our standard. See, if we want to win the fight against the enemy, We need to know the Word of God. You you see, if you know the Word of God, you won't be trapped up in all this worldly activity because you know God wants you to go in a particular way. You you see, the truth will set you free. You you see, you need to understand that it is the Word of God that is the guide of your life. And, And then Paul goes on to talk about the breastplate of righteousness. You see, for the believer, righteousness is what we need to do to get us out of being in the habit of doing sin. See, if you do right long enough, you'll get in the habit of not doing sin. You see, that's why he says, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Do the right thing. You see, positionally in front of God, we are righteous. 
But righteousness, sanctification is a process that we have to go through. We have to make daily decisions to do the right thing. You, you see, if you drink when you go to that club too much, then don't go. If every time you go to that boy's house or that girl's house you're having sex, then don't go. If you always get with those boys and y'all do things that you shouldn't do, then the Bible is telling us that you should have some new friends this morning. You see, doing the right thing is what God commands us to do. And if you're going to affect and have an effective Christian experience, you got to live right. You got to know how to live by looking at the Bible, but then you got to do it. And then verse 15 says we need to put on the shoes of the gospel. You, you see, that, that, that basically means that we should be born again. That we should know the gospel truth. That we should know the foundation of our faith. We should know what we believe and why we believe it. You, you, you see, when you have the gospel in your heart, you won't be persuaded by all these cults who come knocking on your door. You won't be persuaded by the Jehovah Witnesses who says that God or Jesus is a God. When the Bible clearly teaches us in John 1 that Jesus is the God. You see, you won't be deceived when Mormons come to you and talk about how um, Michael and, I mean, um, Jesus and Satan are spiritual brothers. You, you would know that's nonsense from the very beginning because you know the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? You know the foundations of what you believe. And so when they come knocking on your door, when, see, that's the world system. Satan has put up all these religions to get you distracted. He, he will even have you do good. He, see, Satan will have you do good than to do what God wants you to do. And so that's why it's so important to be holding to the fundamentals of the faith. That, that, that's why... We should see you here Sunday school. Yeah, yeah. That's why we should see you here Wednesday night. Yeah. Because you need to know the fundamentals of the faith. Yeah. And, 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 and then Paul says that you should have the shield of faith. You should have the shield of faith. Now, now faith is basically putting what you believe into action. You see, you should have faith enough in the Word of God that if it tells you it's going to happen, it's going to happen. If, if the Word of God says sex before marriage is wrong, you should be able to hold on to that fact and act in that direction. You, you, you can't fall to the whims and the ways of this world. You, you see, having faith will also give you peace in the midst of this chaotic world. You, you see, there, there are some people who, who will say that you can lose your salvation and, and you always worried about, am I saved or am I not saved? But the Bible says that once you believe in Jesus, the very Christ, no one can take away your salvation. So that salvation will give you peace in the midst of your circumstances, in the midst of your storms this morning. And that is good news. And, and then if you look at verse 17 through 18. He goes from defensive to offensive. He, he says, now you, you're supposed to pick up those things and, and, and protect yourself. But now, he says, equip yourself with the sword of the Spirit. He, he says, take the sword, and, and now you're going to go after something. You're going to go after the devil when he goes against you. You, you, you see, the primary Greek word for word is logos. And, and this refers to the totality of the whole Bible. However, the word used in this particular text is rhema. Now, now, while rhema refers to just an aspect, see, logos refers to the entire Bible, but rhema refers to the utter word of God, the spoken word of God. And, and we see the spoken word of God in action in Matthew 4, 1 through 11, when he is tempted by the devil. I'm talking about Jesus now. And he's tempted by the devil three times. And every time that Satan comes at him, he comes at Satan with the word of God. But it's not just the word. He didn't say, Satan, let me take it out. Let me show you. He says, no, this is what the Bible says. You, you see, you hit the devil with the word of God. You, 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 you say it. You utter it. You tell the devil 
get behind me, Satan. For all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. You, you use the word of God this morning. You, you, you see, the word of God, the utter word of God. There's power in the word of God this morning. Now, now you, you might be asking that there are six, that, that there are six things a part of your armor. And you got all six ready to go. You ask yourself, how am I going to put all this stuff on? Well, it, it tells you in verse 18. I didn't read it, but it tells you in verse 18. How do you put on the full armor of God? Right. Simple. All you got to do is pray. Right. You see, prayer is how you activate this armor. You see, when you are going through things in life and life seems to have gotten you down, you need to pray and put on the whole armor of God this morning. And, and that is good news. You see, prayer is your access to God. You see, God looks up, God is up there and he's waiting for you in this other realm to access him. He says, James says, you, ask, you have not because you ask not. And if you want to access God this morning in the other realm, all you have to do is pray. And so I beseech all of you this morning as we remember the redemptive work of Jesus Christ to arm yourself with the full armor of God, that we are fighting powers that are not of this world. So you can't see it, feel it, or touch it, but it's out there. And so God says, get yourself ready for the battle. Yeah. 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 Yeah.